Well, this won't be much of a slideshow, but um, I wanted to at least have something so my face didn't have to be like, you know, the whole screen. There we go. So I wanted to have something in the background other than me. But I want to talk a little bit about survivors and those with lived experience. Um, in the last video, I talked about some opportunities for... Um, well, some opportunities to help, some opportunities for um, the field to grow. There are no greater opportunities for the field to grow, in my opinion, than suicide survivors and those with lived experience. These are two groups that are in great need of help, in great need of research, in great need of people caring, and um, there's just not enough. You know, I... The research I know most just because it's I'm a researcher, I love it. And there's very little that's been done or is going on, you know, looking at how do we help someone who has lost someone by suicide or how do we help those who um who have attempted suicide? Yeah, you know, how do we help them recover? We talked about treatment and purely how to, you know, just reduce the suicide risk, and that's important. But how do we help them recover from that? You know, dealing with a suicide attempt is a major thing. You know, there are medical bills. It'll change relationships. It may you may lose your job. You know, there are a ton of life stressors. How do you cope with those? Um, it's just a great need of more work in these areas. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what they are um, as a lead up to some videos that are already on YouTube. Um, it's, I just, I can't speak as well and get the message across as some of these other videos. So instead of wasting your time with me uh, going on, I want to just give you kind of an introduction to these topics and then let you see some of those other videos that I think are really, really important, really help drive home the issues that we deal uh, with with these two groups um, and why we need to continue working. So you're reading to address this some, but what is a suicide survivor? Uh, in many ways, this is something that still is debated. Um, we're still trying to figure out what a survivor is. But the way I think of it is a suicide survivor is anyone who's intimately affected by the death of someone to suicide or by suicide. But I even struggle with defining this. Um, I talked about in the very first lecture that my grandmother died by suicide. Now, I struggle with knowing whether or not I'm a survivor because the death actually happened before I was born. So on one hand, how can I be that intimately affected if I wasn't even alive when it happened? But on the other hand, the experience affected me so greatly that here I am, this is what I do. You know, I I study suicide. I I work to prevent suicide. Um, so it's hard, and on you don't want to, you know, take away from someone else's survivorship by claiming survivorship. But as you'll see in the video that I'm going to post with suicide survivors, um, I don't think I'm the only one that struggles with this. I think. A lot of survivors struggle with it and recognize that we all have our own path. Um, we all have different struggles. We all have different experiences. And it doesn't mean that, um, you know, we're not trying to figure out who's worse than others or, you know, who's deserving of the title. It's more that, you know, we all were affected just in different ways. And with that, with being intimately affected by a suicide, there's a need for help. Um, you'll see in the video that I'm going to show you with um, suicide survivors. Again, these are people that have lost a loved one to suicide. You'll hear what they're going through, the struggles they're going through, even years later. Um, and yet there, there just hasn't been a major focus of how do we help these individuals, even though we know that suicide survivors are at higher risk of suicide? You know, helping suicide survivors um, 
is preventing suicide, but there just hasn't been much focus. So it's an area that I hope my lab is going to go in. I have a grad student coming in who wants to study this area, and I'm really looking forward to it because it's so needed and um, a lot of opportunities there. So if you're looking for a place to make a difference, uh, suicide survivorship is really important. And, um, I think a great place to do work and because there are a lot of people there in great need as you'll see. Um, so what is lived experience? Um, you know, there are many names people go by with lived experience, but you know, traditionally we talk about individuals as suicide attempters, but we don't want to, you know, but that's a label. You don't want to label someone by a past behavior, but so, I, I'm not sure what the best label is. I keep hearing lived experience, and I kind of like that. Um, and I think soon we'll we'll know more of what the best label to use is, or what's the best term, I should say. But this is a group that just recently is getting a voice. So I'm recording this in 2014, just so you know what I mean by recently. But, um, so... Within the American Association of Suicidology, which is the main suicide group in the United States, um, there have been three groups for a long time. There have been clinicians, um, researchers, and survivors. Those were the three groups. And in 2013, there was a real push, a real movement to have a fourth group, a group for those with lived experience, because um, there were a lot of individuals who said, you know, I, I don't fit in the groups that are here, but you know, I have, I have something to say. I need to be at the table and they were right. And, um, thankfully this year is the first year we've had a fourth group, a group for lived experience for the, um, for the association. And it's really a great addition. And so with that, it's a group that's just really starting to congeal in a lot of ways, starting to become a group on their own and having a voice. But what an important voice it is, because these are individuals who know um, what causes suicide better than most anyone out there. And these are individuals we need to support because we know they're at higher risk of suicide. So. It's a very important group. It's one that we need to be talking with, need to learn how to better help, because as I mentioned in my lead-in, you know, our focus is always so much on the suicide risk, and that's good, but um, recovering from a suicide attempt is tough. Um, you know, people don't know what to say, and because of that, so often people say nothing. People just go away, and... Um, and it can be very isolating and very lonely. And we need we need more research. We need more of a focus on how do we help people in those days after? How do we help people come back to recover, to, um, you know, to find the joy in life that they so desperately yearn for? So it's another area that has tremendous need. I really think there's going to be tremendous growth in this area and i'm just so pleased to see the growth within aas um but again you'll see with the videos that are coming um you'll get a sense of um the value of this group um in many ways i mean again to understanding suicide there's certainly great value there but also there's um great value in just learning how to help people and learning how to help someone recover from something, you know, there are a few things this matrix a suicide attempt that one can go through. So there's tremendous opportunity here um, with this group, and, and I'm just very much looking forward to learning more about the group as it gets um, fully congealed. And so anyway, that's off topic, but... Um, so hopefully that's a lead in to the videos. And um, when you watch them, just think about, think about their unique struggles and maybe how we currently are equipped to help them and how we're not equipped to help them and what needs to be done for us to better help those who um, 
who need our assistance, but um, perhaps there's not the research or, you know, there's not the awareness of how to help them yet. So with that, that's the uh, last lecture I'm going to record as part of this class. But again, thank you for taking this class, or if you're not even in the class watching the YouTube videos, thank you for being a part of this. Um, I'm very passionate about suicide prevention, and I hope that you've, you know, maybe there's an interest there, maybe you've gotten passionate about it yourself. Um, if there's anything I can do to help, if you want to be involved, certainly get in touch with me. I'd, I'd love that. Um, if there's anything inaccurate with my slides, please let me know. Um, I always want to be improving this and helping people learn about suicide and learn how to help help suicidal individuals because even one death is too many. Every death, as the Berman article talks about, greatly affects many, many people. And um, and we gotta we gotta work toward fixing this. So thank you again for being a part of the class. I respect you for taking it. I truly do. And um, and I, I hope you find it helpful. So thank you again.